the duties of the traditional ruler. Brethren, why I have called you into this kingdom is so that I will bless you and give you your appropriate position in, in this traditional ruler's meeting with the Father. The Father's blessings have been showered on all of them. Those who did not attend this important meeting should be careful not to be engulfed by severe confusion. It is important that everybody should attend the various fellowship meetings in the kingdom so that they would be able to identify their various duties. None among all of the worldly kings had ever brought a good account of his stewardship. All they know is to instigate communal conflicts and hostilities. It would have been proper for all the traditional rulers to assemble before the Father so that they would be made to know their mistakes and inadequacies. I am particularly pleased with Brother Odom for his unabated loyalty and sense of commitment. It is said that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. For the sake of the traditional rulers who have answered this call, peace is now made to reign throughout the whole world. The main cause of calamities among the entire inhabitants of the earth is ideal rulership. If Christ with his divine host does not come to govern mankind as the perfect king, there will be no peace throughout the world. The entire traditions of man in the western world and those of other parts of the world have been abolished. They only, the only doctrine that will hold sway and remain permanent is the divine doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ. The connotation of the iron rod, brethren. We have heard from the scriptures that Christ will rule the world with an iron rod. What do you think this connotes? Do you conceive it to be a physical rod made of iron? That is not what it means. The iron rod refers to Christ's divine glory. The proof to prove this point, during his first advent on earth, did he come as a king? So his coming to rule the world with an iron rod signifies the coming to assume glory. His second coming cannot be compared with his first advent. Remember that when Christ came the first time, he was born in an obscure, unrecognized place which did not which did not have even a prophet the, that accounted for why in spite of his good works he was not recognized but in the present time he has come with all his glories and hosts of heaven to rule he is the king of kings and lord of lords nobody can oppose him when he talks everything will come to full manifestation within a short time an absolute peace will flourish in the whole world the entire traditional rulers in the fold are most blessed and soon all of them would be accorded recognition because before now they were regarded as insignificant christ the head of the royal family brethren the prevalent situation in the world is that those who are incapable of ruling are placed in positions of authority. If I may ask, how can a person who is not a descendant of the royal family become a king and think he can have peace and establish blissful rulership? How can a nation know peace 
if the ruler does not have the Holy Spirit to direct him on what to do? This question is directed to the, to the traditional rulers of the kingdom. What good attributes do you possess considering all the teachings you have been receiving from God? Through the Father's infinite love, all the traditional rulers have been forgiven. You should know that the king is greater than the president or the minister or governor. And who is this king? The king is Christ. Beside Christ, no other king exists. Christ comes from a royal family. A person who is not from such a family cannot be king. Christ is therefore the greatest king and must be accorded his due honor. Whoever is a king, no matter his age, stature or color, must be given his due respect and honor. This injunction must also be adhered to in this kingdom whenever it is the traditional rulers fellowship everybody must join hands together and support them it is not an easy thing for a king to leave his throne to attend a function elsewhere every function is supposed to be held in his palace so we have to support the traditional rulers fellowship and since they have hearkened to this clarion call their communities are blessed and peace has been extended to them. Various traditional rulers from other parts of the world are coming to the kingdom. So any king or traditional ruler who does not respond to the call shall be driven away from his throne or kingdom. Our brother, Chief Odom, is aware of this fact. Any house without a leader is doomed. The rule of traditional rulers in the kingdom, brethren, the traditional rulers fellowship is a unit for the amalgamation of all traditional rulers throughout the world because this will attract the attention of the various governments to the deplorable condition of every community Every traditional ruler in the kingdom is enjoined to wake from slumber. It is their place to go into the world and invite their colleagues who are still outside the fold to come into the kingdom. The Father has made available everything to enable them to, to enable them carry their assignment successfully. All the members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star must therefore contribute towards the success of this fellowship. The reason being that it is not easy for a king to leave his palace. Our brother, Ikoni, has been properly used by the father. His rulership was inherited from his forefathers. So, Man, know thyself. I have accomplished my mission. All the things written in the scriptures have been fulfilled and I am now satisfied. Make references to the following text. Ninth witness, Revelation chapter 17 verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they that war with him are called and chosen and faithful. Tenth witness, Revelation chapter 19 verses 1 to 21. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgment, for he had uh, judged the great 
war, which did corrupt the, the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever, and the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise, O God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and made war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nation, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beasts, and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the earth, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled 
with their flesh. Brethren, is there any king in the world who rules in peace? The traditional ruler's fellowship should not sleep any longer. The ball is now in their court. It is their place to direct and lead their colleagues who are still in the world for they are ready to come to this fold. Everything will soon be put in place. In due course, there shall be a quarters in the kingdom which will be exclusively meant for the traditional rulers. Everything will be kept in its appropriate place as God has arranged. All events, witness, are temporary. If the Father does not move into action, there will be no peace. This point, this point affirms the scriptural nomination that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. That was in Psalm chapter 127 verse 1. Brethren, any traditional ruler who is not recognized by God is perished. Any, any, any traditional ruler that is not recognized by God has perished. You, the traditional rulers, are therefore advised to go out and unite the whole world into one as you are one with the Father, you should know that very soon you are going to be well recognized and given due reward by the government and consequently peace will be extended to all your communities. Your rulership is not restricted to the artificial boundaries of your communities. It goes even beyond the other communities of the world. You have now been made the missionaries of God and all of you are under the rulership of only one king, who is Christ. I believe your eyes have now been opened so that when you attend traditional rulers fellowship next time, you will come with diverse gifts as tokens of appreciation. This appreciative spirit must be exhibited to, to the traditional rulers themselves. This appreciative spirit must be exhibited even though the traditional rulers themselves do not know the importance attached to their titles. They have not been able to know this because even their appearance show that they are not one. It is the responsibility of a traditional ruler to cater for the sheep of God. They must seek the well-being of the needy all over the world. The traditional rulers must be loving, they must be meek, peaceful, kind, patient and truthful. And most importantly, they must possess the Holy Spirit. The situation in the kingdom of God cannot in any way be comparable to what obtains in the Roman Catholic or Mount Zion Church. Because out there, they thrive in segregation and hatred. These churches do not seek the betterment of others. Whereas the reverse is the case in this kingdom. In this kingdom, love, peace, unity, oneness flourish endlessly. The so-called white missionaries do not work to the satisfaction of God. Rather, they work to fill their purses. Anyone who is of God does not create division, but always fears and gives reverence to God. Brethren, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. 
Let my peace and blessing rest and abide with the entire world now and forevermore. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.